All right, today we have the all new AC240 power station from Blue Eddy. Let's open it up. We have our user's manual, our accessory box, handy little accessory carrying bag. We have our AC charging cable. We have our solar charging cable. So it's MC4 to this aviation style plug. And then we have two other cables that I'm unsure of. I think this may be a DC output cable. And this one I'm not so sure. It's a XT60 to a Anderson style connector. All right, and there's the unit. Now here's the kicker on this thing. It's IP65 rated. That means it's water resistant and dust resistant. All right, so let's take a closer look. On the front, we've got our 12 volt DC uh, cigarette lighter style jack at 10 amps. We got a 12 volt DC 30 amp port. So it's an aviation style connector, which I believe this cable is the one that is used here. So let's see. Yep. And that breaks out to a XT60. We've got our USB section here. We've got USB C 100 watt, two of those. And we got USB A 18 watt, two of those. And everything is covered with these rubber plugs here. So that probably helps to keep moisture out. On the AC section, we have a TT30 30 amp 110 volt receptacle. This is for your RV plugs. And then we've got two 20 amp AC receptacles here. We have our screen, our power button. So let's go ahead and turn the unit on. There we go. Great looking screen showing that we have 61% state of charge. And everything on this thing just feels high quality. The plastic, uh, the molding, everything feels really, really good. Uh, these buttons, these are kind of rubberized and they got a nice little tactile click to them and they light up. So we just turn the DC side on, the USB and the AC side. Very nice, I love these buttons. All right, so on this side, we have a vent, and then this is an expansion battery port. And on the other side, we have a grounding location. We have our DC and PV input right here, which is another aviation style connector. And it can take 11 to 60 volts at 21 amps for 1200 watts max. We have our AC input port. So this is for charging from the wall. And then we have an AC parallel port. So apparently you can parallel two of these units together to double the power. I'm not sure if it, I'm not sure if it gives you 240 volts at that point or does it just double everything up? I'm gonna have to find out. And here on the back side we have some specs. So we have an AC input at 120 volts, 20 amps max. We have a DC input at 11 to 30 volts, eight amps max. So that would probably be like a car charging scenario. We have a PV input at 11 to 60 volts, 21 amps max for 1200 watts. It says our working humidity is 10 to 90%. Okay, and our battery capacity is 1,536 watt hours. Our AC output is 120 volts at 2,400 watts max. Our DC output is 12 volt at 30 amps max. And we have our cigarette lighter port, 12 volt, 10 amp max. Our AC and DC output total is 2,500 watts. All right guys, so what I wanna do right now is I wanna hook up some solar. And we are going to use these two 385 watt bifacial panels. They're wired in parallel right now. We got some pretty good sun. There's some chunky clouds and some water vapor up there. But uh, let's go ahead and plug it in and see what we get. So we got these solar cables connected to our MC4 adapter. There we go. All right, our unit came on. And we are now getting some 
solar input. All right, above 600 watts now. Look at that, 650, very nice. All right, so what I wanna do right now is I wanna shade the panels and then unshade them and see how quickly we get back up to power. All right, so I'm walking in front of both panels right now. I am partially shading both and I'm out of the way and they are back in full sun. All right, so very quickly, because it's already back up by the time I walked back around. <laughs> very nice. All right, so let's test some AC loads. And let's hook up this air conditioner. There we go. All right, so far pulling about 200 watts. That should ramp up. Oh, look, we're at 700 watts. Very nice. Let's go ahead and hook the heat gun up too. Turn it on high. Okay, there we go. So we're pulling over 2,000 watts. We need to push it some more. Let's hook up the induction cooktop. There we go. Okay, there we are. All right, now we're pulling 2350. All right, so that's pretty close to that 2400 watts. I'm just gonna let that run for a bit and see how we do. All right, so the water's boiling. <laughs> the whistle's going off. Now we're still uh, pulling 2360, 2370 actually right there. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this for right now. All right, let's try to push it even further. I'm going to connect the heat gun and the induction cooktop because that should really, really push it. Get this turned back on. There we go. So 1700 watts there. And then let's go, I guess, low on this. All right, there's 2440. So we are over the rated wattage of this inverter. So let's go high on the heat gun. All right, now we're at 3,000, 3,100 watts. And we're getting some, uh, we're getting some warning messages there. Uh, and it shut off. Uh, so that's what it's supposed to do. We were pushing it way, way too far. But uh, yeah, so far so good. So let's turn the induction back on. And there is a fan running in this. Here, let's pause this to turn. Well, let's unplug this so we don't hear its fan running. This is the fan that's running in the AC 240. So it's very, very quiet. So let's plug this induction cooktop back in. Let's do the heat gun on low again. Yeah, so we're back to doing about 44 watts over the max right now. And here's the app pulled up. Let's see it. Showing uh, 2.4 kilowatts going out from the AC. Now it has several modes in here. We're at our UPS mode. We've got charging modes. We've got standard turbo and silent. We got grid self adaption. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, it says that it can charge normally. Even when the voltage on the grid is unstable due to voltage spikes, drops, or other instabilities. Wow, that's interesting. The power lifting mode, so that, that allows you to have more AC output than what is normally available on certain applications. I'm not sure what eco mode is. Oh, it has some shutdown times. Uh, so, if, uh, so after four hours, the AC output will shut off. 
or less than 15 watts it can shut off and there's also a DC side for that too that's pretty neat all right now let's do an AC charge so we'll plug in the AC power there we go there we go we got some AC input coming in looks like we're still going up 825 see here on the app we're showing 823 coming in from grid so we probably need to go into the settings and turn on see we're on standard charging mode so let's turn on turbo and see what happens there we go whoa look at that 1746 yeah 1.7 kilowatts <laughs> wow so this thing, this thing will charge fast. That's awesome. So yeah, and some people ask if they should always charge these things on fast mode. And the answer is probably not. Uh, if you want them to last as long as possible, if you want the batteries to last as long as possible, then you probably want to charge it on standard mode. Because obviously the fast mode, you're, you're charging the batteries at a faster rate and uh, that can put more strain on them. Wow, what a gorgeous day, <laughs> holy moly. We just had like four days in a row of just straight rain, it was horrible. Anyways, I didn't have any time to mess around with the AC240, so let's go ahead and get back to it. Oh wow, it does get dusty in here. Just four days of not doing anything with this thing and it is covered in dust. I think we're gonna have to clean this off. Okay, yes, I know that was terrible acting. <laughs> so what I did was I vacuumed up dirt from the carpet in the sunroom and I put it in this seasoning shaker, this empty seasoning shaker I had. <laughs> it worked really good. So let's get her nice and dirty. There we go. There we go. All right, so let's put that IP65 rating to the test. Here we go. This feels so weird. <laughs> All right, I think she's clean. Ah. I don't see any sparks or smoke, so that's a good sign. I think I'm just going to let this thing dry off. Blue Eddie said that it needs to be completely dry before you try to use it. All right, guys, I think we got this thing all dried up. I guess we should go ahead and open these and check all these ports here. We especially want to make sure the AC ports don't have any water. <laughs> and uh, the AC input port. Okay, we're good. All right, let's turn it on. Okay, so far so good. <laughs> it's on. Let's charge it from the AC. All right, AC cords in. We're charging. All right, let's try the heat gun on the AC side here. Let's turn the AC on. There we go. Yeah, we're back in business. Yeah, so everything seems to be working. So it took the dust and the water just fine. All right, so now I want to do a capacity test. 
And I want to do it through this 30 amp DC output. So I've got it hooked up to the A Torch DL24P. Let's go ahead and turn the DC output on. And let's start the test. We're showing 12.9 volts and we're pulling 10 amps for 129 watts. We could actually turn that up a little bit. There we go. So we're going to do 140 watts. All right, so I'll let that continue and I'll be back when it's complete. All right, so our capacity test has completed and we have 1,294.1 usable watt hours. All right, let's get a weight on this guy. And we have come in at 70.2 pounds. And lastly, here's our pure sine wave. All right, guys, so I think that's going to be it for the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. I'll leave links in the description, and I'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>